Can tinnitus damage my brain or cause other health problems? Tinnitus affects concentration, anxiety, stress, focus, and sleep. So of course it impacts the brain uh, as the brain is part of our nervous system. But fortunately tinnitus can get better through proper treatment and we don't see any permanent negative effects to one's brain health because of tinnitus. Today you're here with four tinnitus doctors, Dr. Brianne, Dr. Ramsey, Dr. Michelle, and myself, Dr. Ben, and we're here to answer 20 questions to help you with tinnitus. First up, what is one common cause of tinnitus? Temporomandibular joint and muscle disorders, also known as TMJ. Stress, loud noise exposure. Hearing loss. Research shows that about 90% of people with tinnitus have a hearing loss. What factors can make tinnitus worse? Retracting from our normal day-to-day -day activities because of the tinnitus and in turn staying home in a quiet environment. Us. Uh, we can get in our own way with our thoughts and our reactions to our tinnitus. I think holding on to stress, take time each day to try to release stress, decompress through things like meditation or exercise. Insomnia, trouble sleeping, or abrupt changes to diet or medications, to name a few reasons why tinnitus can get worse. How can you tell if neuroplasticity is occurring during your tinnitus treatment? Noticing a change in your reaction to the tinnitus, so instead of feeling really anxious, you feel a little more neutral towards it. Mm -hmm. Um, often we can see fluctuations in the tinnitus after treatment begins, and that can be completely normal and a great sign for a neuroplastic change. Starting to have breaks from the tinnitus, so whether that's a few minutes where you haven't heard it or thought about it, or hours, or eventually days. My patients who start noticing their first signs of recovery will say, I went five minutes without noticing my tinnitus. Wow, that hasn't happened before. Why do you think tinnitus comes and goes? Increased stress or anxiety. Um, I'm going to say sleep good sleep versus poor sleep. On that page, I was going to say fatigue and focus. So the more tired we are, the less able we are to focus on things that we want, and we'll start to notice our tinnitus or other things that are bothering us a little bit more than when we're well rested. Tinnitus can be a barometer of your nervous system. So that's the main reason, in my opinion. But also tinnitus caused by jaw or neck issues can fluctuate dramatically. What are your thoughts on using Apple AirPods to treat hearing loss and tinnitus? While it may help some people, I recommend seeing an audiologist to first determine why potentially you have tinnitus and if AirPods would be an appropriate option for you to treat hearing loss and tinnitus. For me, I think it's just going to be interesting to see what the real world outcomes are going to be for hearing loss with the use of the AirPods. Some of the things that come up for me is I, I worry a bit about the comfort of using them all day, especially since we benefit from sound therapy during most waking hours. So those are some of the things that come up for me. I think that the AirPods are going to be able to help some people, but I worry that some of the medical causes of hearing loss and tinnitus are going to be overlooked because people are only addressing their hearing loss and tinnitus through what their iPhones are telling them. In my opinion, for most patients, blocking the ear canal with AirPods or AirPods Pro or any other headphone during your tinnitus treatment is a bad idea. I don't want that to happen. We want to keep the ear canals naturally open. Regular sound therapy treatment devices or even hearing aids for tinnitus typically use tips in the ears with little holes in that rubber tip, and that allows natural sound in, uh, which is much better to help reduce tinnitus in the long run. What is one technique to manage tinnitus effectively during the workday? Get outside, get some fresh air a couple times during the day. Yeah, and to piggyback on that, taking breaks, walk around the office, use your sound therapy. If you're working on the computer, you could have like some stress balls, slime, other objects that are on your desk that you can kind of like hold play with um, just to get some extra sensory input so you're not noticing your tinnitus as much. There's a term called sound enrichment, which means always having sounds in the background at a level that's lower than your tinnitus volume. And doing this during a treatment period is highly recommended. But at the end of the treatment period, you won't need that constant sound enrichment. And most of our patients would report their tinnitus levels are improved even when they're in a quiet room working. Can tinnitus damage my brain or cause other health problems? Although tinnitus itself does not harm the brain, its impact on mental health can lead to withdrawal from our normal social interactions. And this reduction in social engagement may contribute to depression, anxiety, and 
and some other mental health disorders. Yeah, I agree with Dr. Brianne. Definitely not going to damage our brains, but some of the things that come up for me for health problems would be along the lines of anxiety, depression, compulsive thinking. Yes, tinnitus is not going to directly harm your brain or any other parts of your body, but it can affect your overall well-being and mental health. And studies have found that anxiety disorders are quite common in those who have tinnitus. Prevalence rates can range anywhere from 25 to 45%, depending on the severity of the symptoms. Tinnitus affects concentration, anxiety, stress, focus, and sleep. So, of course, it impacts the brain. Uh, as the brain is part of our nervous system. But fortunately, tinnitus can get better through proper treatment, and we don't see any permanent negative effects to one's brain health because of tinnitus. How is pitch matching used, and what does it reveal? For some, choosing a sound therapy option that's closer to the pitch of the tinnitus may actually provide more relief. Pitch matching can be used as a counseling tool, can help patients better understand their tinnitus, and it gives them validity to what they are hearing. It can give insight into what frequencies they may have hearing loss at or where they may have outer hair cell damage. And it can also, like Dr. Brianne said, help identify what types of sounds might be more effective for sound therapy. Amongst tinnitus doctors, determining the exact pitch frequency of tinnitus does not lead us to recommend specific treatments. It is, however, important to know whether you generally hear ringing or hissing and which part of your ear or head that it's coming from, as that can be an important symptom. What is one common cognitive distortion that your patients with tinnitus struggle with? How will I ever habituate to a sound that is so loud and intrusive? The volume of my tinnitus is never going to change. Will my tinnitus ever go away? Because I have tinnitus, I'm going to lose my hearing. So again, these are all cognitive distortions. They're not the truth or the reality, but they're thoughts that often come up with a lot of our patients. What's your specialty as a tinnitus doctor working at Treble Health, where we see patients nationwide via telehealth? I enjoy working with those who have tinnitus and hearing loss and helping to treat both. I really enjoy working with somatosensory tinnitus patients, primarily because that is the root cause of my tinnitus. I think I excel at the cognitive behavioral therapy techniques that can help people manage their tinnitus. My specialty is tinnitus retraining therapy. It's what I've seen to be the most effective for my patients. And I was trained under the founder of TRT, uh, Dr. Jastroboff, who is my mentor. Why might bone conduction headphones be recommended instead of hearing aids for managing tinnitus? Sometimes it's strictly a financial decision. Um, I would say if there's no hearing loss that needs to be treated. Some people just really cannot tolerate anything inside of their ear canals, and so this would give them a way to be able to utilize sound therapy. It would be pretty rare that I would recommend bone conduction headphones for proper tinnitus treatment, but as an occasional tool for sound therapy, it can be helpful for some patients. When would you advise someone to use hearing protection like earplugs around loud noises? Sporting events, if it's louder than 85 decibels consistently. Along the lines of the 85 decibel rule, another activity might be going to a concert. Power tools, landscaping equipment, if you're gonna be utilizing them for extended period of time, use hearing protection. There you go. And there are free apps where you can download a sound level meter to measure what is 85 decibels. Uh, if it's occasional sound, don't be alarmed. It's okay. But if it's consistent exposure to a very loud sound, then definitely use earplugs. If you've had tinnitus, how severe was it? And what techniques did you find most helpful? I've had intermittent tinnitus, nothing constant. And anytime I do hear it, I immediately redirect my attention to something else rather than feeding my attention into it more. I have unilateral tinnitus. Um, I would say at the onset, it was severe. I have successfully habituated, and I would say hands down sound therapy was one of the best tools that I used by far. I had probably moderate tinnitus over a decade ago, like Dr. Ramsey, it was unilateral, only in my right ear. And I think I used a lot of different techniques, but the one that I think really helped me was to change my cognitive distortion about why I had tinnitus in my right ear. And it kind of changed the de definition. I was really worried about having hearing loss in my right ear, even though I never had any measurable hearing loss. And I started to tell myself that my right ear just could hear more sounds. It was more sensitive than my left ear and just twisting around those words helped me to calm my mind about why I was experiencing tinnitus in my right ear. I've had a mild tinnitus in both ears, generally around a one or a two on a 10-point scale. 
And what I use is sound enrichment. So when I'm working during the day in a, in a quiet space, I'll always have sound in the background or music playing. What herbal supplements might be beneficial for managing tinnitus symptoms? Possibly magnesium because it can calm our central nervous system. Yeah, I agree with Brianne. Typically none, but magnesium is, is a good possibility for the calming effects. Same. I don't think that there's any that have any strong research background on helping to manage or improve tinnitus symptoms, but things like magnesium have shown some improvements. Unfortunately, very few herbal supplements are used successfully for tinnitus, although many are sold. And the reality is many of our patients who work with us, they tell us, hey, I was desperate. I would have tried anything. So they ended up trying herbal supplements, but 90% of the time they say it didn't do anything. What is one way to prevent tinnitus? Try to avoid any known ototoxic medications that could be damaging to our inner ear hair cells or our cochlea. Along the lines of the somatosensory theme, I would say if you have a known issue with grinding your teeth or clenching your teeth, get ahead and get a treatment protocol going for the potential TMJ. I think using hearing protection when you're going to be exposed to levels of sounds above 85 decibels or if you're going to be frequently exposed to short bursts of loud sounds can help to prevent tinnitus. Agreed. Those are the main points. And there was a 2024 study we reviewed here on our YouTube channel out of Australia that found that low zinc and low iron levels were correlated with people who develop tinnitus. But again, that's correlation, not causation. What lifestyle changes can help reduce tinnitus? Exercising, socializing with friends and family. Along the lines of what Dr. Brianne mentioned earlier, um, community, not isolating, getting out, participating, whether that's a yoga class or even just lunch with friends. I alluded to this earlier. I think finding ways for you to release stress and tension through things like exercise, hobbies, meditation, socializing can be one of the best ways to help you reduce tinnitus. Doing things that calm your nervous system, calm your mind, get out of anxiety and stress loops, that will absolutely help you. For many of my patients, they love the guided breathing exercises that are offered in our free seven-day tinnitus meditation challenge. Uh, You can find that on YouTube. Just search tinnitus meditation. When should someone see a doctor about their tinnitus? I recommend seeing an audiologist as soon as you can because they can help rule out if it's something simple or something more serious. Sometimes just a little bit of earwax can cause tinnitus in your ears and removing that wax can make it go away. Mm -hmm. If the tinnitus is pulsating to your heartbeat, that would be a good indicator to see a physician just to rule out any potential health condition. In general, I think it's always a good idea to get checked out if you're having some consistent levels of tinnitus to find out if there's any possible cause. Like Dr. Brianne said, maybe it's wax, maybe you have fluid in your ears. So getting checked out by an ENT or audiologist if you're having consistent tinnitus is always recommended in my eyes. In my opinion, if your tinnitus is constant and it's been there for longer than a week, I would get a hearing test and reach out to our team at Treble Health for a free telehealth consultation to review the results. Uh, We'll even put a link right there on the screen so you can book a free consultation with us to do that. What is the connection between tinnitus and hearing loss? So outer hair cell damage has been found to cause both hearing loss and tinnitus, though not everyone with hearing loss has tinnitus. Couldn't have said it better myself. I agree with Dr. Brian. Exactly. Just really want to stress that not everybody who has hearing loss has tinnitus. Just like not everybody who has, who has tinnitus has hearing loss. There is a large, larger portion of people who have tinnitus who have hearing loss, but the inverse isn't true. There's more people who have hearing loss that do not have tinnitus. So the connection there is a little bit loose. Here's an interesting thought experiment. If you have tinnitus that's really bothering you and you have some high pitch hearing loss, there are people that have much worse hearing loss than you, but they have no tinnitus or very mild tinnitus. That shows us that tinnitus does not only come from the ear, but it also comes from how our auditory brain responds, reacts, and amplifies that signal. So hopefully that's a sign that treatment is out there because we can restore and reduce the tinnitus at a neurological level, despite your hearing test and your hearing function not getting any better. Question 19, what can cause pulsatile tinnitus? High blood pressure, increased heart rate. TMJ. There's some tumors that can grow around the ear or the skull that can press on veins and cause pulsatile tinnitus. We have an intricate system of 
veins and arteries, so any problem with those could potentially cause a pulsing sound in your ear. Have you ever seen tinnitus resolve on its own? I have seen tinnitus resolve on its own, um, especially if it's due to something somatic. So if you have TMJ and you get a mouth guard, you resolve the TMJ, the tinnitus can go away on its own. Yes, I have seen tinnitus resolve on its own. Same with Dr. Brianne. I have, I too have seen tinnitus resolve on its own. Exactly the same. I have. I can recall a patient who I met one time and the second follow-up, they told me they didn't have tinnitus anymore, but they also happened to move to a lovely seaside apartment. So now they had natural sound therapy that maybe helped. It can. There's absolutely something you can do for your tinnitus. Treatment exists. You're not just stuck with this. It can get better. So thanks guys. This is our team at Tribal Health, if you want to reach out to us, you can go to tribalhealth.com or click the link on the screen. So yeah, I just want to give a shout out to all of our awesome audiologists that are here. Thank you guys so much. Um, this was really fun. And for anyone who's watching, don't hesitate to reach out. We might be able to help you with your tinnitus case. Thanks so much.